Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on neck of femur fracture. A fractured neck of femur is a very common orthopedic presentation. It is typically caused either by low energy injuries, such as a fall in frail older patient, or high energy injuries, such as a road traffic collision or fall from height. Let's look at the brief anatomy. This picture shows the neck of femur. The neck of femur can be considered to have two distinct areas, which are described relative to the joint capsule. The two areas are, intracapsular and extracapsular. Extracapsular can be further divided into intertrochanteric and subtrochanteric. This blue color shows the intracapsular area. Red color shows intertrochanteric, and orange shows subtrochanteric area. Next, we look at classification. Intracapsular fractures can also be further classified by the garden classification. Type 1 is incomplete fracture, non-displaced. Type 2 is complete fracture, but not displaced. Complete fracture, with partial displacement. Type 4 is complete fracture, fully displaced. For clinical features, the leading symptom is trauma, often low energy, which is followed by pain and an inability to weight bear. Pain is felt predominantly in the groin, thigh or, commonly in the elderly, referred to the knee. On examination, the leg is characteristically shortened and externally rotated, due to the pull of the short external rotators, with pain on pin rolling the leg and axial loading. Fortunately, distal neurovascular deficits are rare in isolated neck of femur fractures. However, a full neurovascular examination of the limb is essential. This picture shows shortening and external rotation of the right leg. For investigations, initial plain film radiographic imaging should include AP and lateral views of the affected hip, as well as an AP pelvis, to assess the contralateral normal hip. Basic routine blood tests are required, and creatinine kinase can be checked for any rhabdomyolysis. For management, a TE approach, stabilize patient, and treat any life-threatening condition. Give adequate analgesia. Definitive management is surgical. After operation, early rehabilitation is helpful, together with physiotherapy and occupational therapy. The specific surgical procedures depend on the type of fracture. The options are hip hemiarthroplasty, dynamic hip screw, cannulated hip screw, and anterograde intramedullary femoral nail. There are some possible complications after surgery. Joint dislocation, aseptic loosening, periprosthetic fracture, and infection. That's all for this video. Thank you.